Tonight, why the CIA hacked into Senate intelligence computers, LinkedIn adds a follow button, and the massive security flaw in USBs. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 141 for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Nature Box. Order great tasting healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy delicious treats like chocolate quinoa granola. Oh yeah. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. The New York Times is reporting that after conducting an internal investigation, the U.S.'s Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, has found that some of its officers improperly penetrated a computer network used by the Senate Intelligence Committee while the committee was working on a report criticizing the CIA's detention and interrogation program. The Times cites an official with knowledge of the investigation's findings that CIA officers created a fake online identity to gain access more than once to computers used by members of the committee staff and then tried to cover their tracks. A CIA statement issued today says that John O'Brennan, the agency's director, has apologized to the Intelligence Committee and will set up an internal accountability board to review the issue. The board could recommend, quote, potential disciplinary measures and, quote, steps to address systemic issues. Today, a federal judge ordered that Microsoft must comply with a U.S. warrant seeking email data on servers located in Ireland. Microsoft had previously appealed the case, arguing that a warrant issued by the U.S. doesn't have legal standing because the data being sought is stored abroad. However, a judge disagreed. At this point, it's unclear whether or not the person who owns this email that's being sought by the warrant is a U.S. citizen but Microsoft is basically working to protect the data of its foreign users from the legal reach of the United States government. Apple and Cisco are just two of the companies that have voiced support for Microsoft's suit leading up to today's appeal. Microsoft is expected to continue to appeal, hoping for a win in a higher court. In other, the U.S. government is such a drag news. Twitter has been vocal that it isn't allowed to tell the public what kind of national security requests it gets from organizations like the Department of Justice and the FBI. The company's latest transparency report includes details that the company failed to get permission to share more details about requests concerning national security, for example, how many requests are made each year, and smaller sets of data that provide context to Twitter users. The company does say that its global request for account information has almost doubled since last year, totaling to 2,058 requests from 54 different countries. Eight of those countries were filing requests for the first time, and that copyright takedowns and content removal have also seen increases since its last report. French, French telecommunications company Iliad has made a buyout offer for T-Mobile US, countering an offer by Sprint. That offer has been going on for months and would see Sprint and T-Mobile combine their businesses. Iliad offered $15 billion in cash for 56.6% of T-Mobile US. That works out to about $33 per share. T-Mobile US has confirmed it received the offer, but as for now, has no further comment. Now, Iliad has instigated a bit of a price war in France's mobile telephone market due to its very attractive rates. And the Wall Street Journal reports that it sees the T-Mobile offer as a, quote, one-time opportunity to enter the world's largest telecoms market, citing one of those people familiar with the matter. It has been a good week for social network earnings. We've got Twitter, LinkedIn looks good. In fact, LinkedIn reported its Q2 results and revenue for the second quarter was up 534 million. That's what it was anyway. That's up since last year. And its earnings per share were 51 cents. That's higher than analysts' expectation of 39 cents per share on revenues of 511 million. Today's revenue numbers are up 47% over a year ago. The company has also added a new social functionality to its service. Millions of LinkedIn users now have a follow button, so users can broadcast activity to their followers 
and you don't need to formally connect with them. It's a big shift for LinkedIn. Previously, the only way you could see another member's activity was to connect with them. That was a two-way link, which implied you both knew each other professionally and approved of one another's skills and reputation. Amidst a bit of an earnings slide this week, Samsung has announced plans to launch two new high-end smartphones in the next six months to boost sales and protect the company's lead in mobile phones. Samsung posted its first year-over-year -year drop in net profit in almost three years for the second quarter as competition squeezed the company's smartphone margins. Senior Vice President at Samsung's mobile communications business, Kim Hyung Joon told investors on an earnings call that one smartphone model will feature a large screen and the other will be made using new materials. No other information. Interesting though. Coming up, when iFixit tore down an Oculus Rift headset, guess what they found? The answer may surprise you. And next I'll talk with Ian Thompson from the register about the huge security flaw with virtually everything USB. But first, let's talk about food. You want a snack more? How about making it guilt-free? Wouldn't that be nice? NatureBox will help you achieve your goal. NatureBox snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial. They're good snacks. They taste good and they're good for you. NatureBox will send these snacks right to your door. Free shipping anywhere in the U.S. You just go ahead and go to naturebox.com and click the continue button. Choose your subscription option. You've got three to choose from and then you place your order. Vegan, soy-free, gluten-conscious, lots of dietary needs are covered here, pretty much all of them. And you can also select by taste, savory, sweet, maybe you like spicy. NatureBox has over 100 unique snacks to excite and delight every palate. Mexicana mango, pumpkin cranberry crave, citrus kick almonds, those are good. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank NatureBox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Ian Thompson, reporter over at The Register. Hey, Ian. Hello there. Thanks for joining us. Now, you published a story on this massive security flaw in USB devices. Walk us through what, what's happening here. Well, uh, it's, it's a really interesting piece of hacking. Every USB device has a chip controlling uh, the, how that device interacts with your computer. And what these two guys have been able to do is reverse engineer the firmware of that chip and implant malware directly into it. So it doesn't show up on any antivirus scanners, but the second you plug it into your system, you're compromised and there's not a lot that you can do about it. And it doesn't even show up on some antivirus systems. It's potentially a very major hack, but it's not quite the end of the world. Now, this isn't actually malware on the flash storage of a USB device, right? This is this is a firmware issue. Indeed. I mean, we've had malware on USB devices which spreads to computers for quite some time and in the other direction as well. But this wouldn't show up in the actual flash memory. It's written onto the firmware itself, which was what, kind of what makes it so sneaky. And it makes it very difficult both to detect and to get rid of. Um, I mean, if you had something like this on a USB device which you owned, You'd either have to go into the firmware and remove it, which is a really high-tech job, or you're just going to have to junk the device. It's just that simple. So, you know, USB thumb drives are one obvious uh, example, but you've got keyboards. Uh, you know, the, I mean, USB is very ubiquitous. Many of it's, us use it's USB. It's global standard. So, I mean, so, so what, what, what does everyone do? If you can't remove the vulnerability, what, how do users protect themselves if they even know that this exists? Well, this is it. I mean, at the moment, it's 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 manufacturer specific. So there's about 30 or 40 companies who manufacture these chips, and they've just gone to one manufacturer and proved that it can be done. Now, I've just got off the phone with the USB implementers forum, and they've told me that basically there are security protocols in place within the USB system. It's just that most manufacturers choose not to use them. So on one level, if manufact if this does get to be a big thing, manufacturers will have security stuff in there which they can use, hopefully, to block it off. We're going to have to wait until next week when the full technical details are released at the at the technology summit where they're going to be presenting the paper on this. But it's as I say, it's it would be difficult to block, but at the same time, it's going to be fairly difficult to get it to spread as well. So for anybody who might be watching or listening to the show or reading about this vulnerability somewhere on the register or elsewhere and say, oh gosh, now I have to get rid of all my USB products, what's your best advice for them? don't junk them just yet. I mean, this is very early days. I mean, the temptation is panic, 
you know, put super glue in all your USB ports, but you can't get by without USB in a modern computing environment. So just we'll see what the technical details are. As it turns out, it looks at the moment as though you'd have to do a specific attack on a specific chip. We'd really be in trouble if you could get a virus on your computer. It could write this onto the onto any USB devices firmware just by connecting it into an infected computer. If that happens, yeah, we're going to need some pretty major revisions in security policy. The Black Hat Conference uh, happens next week. It's followed by DEF CON, both big uh, security uh, hubs for people who dabble in this type of technology. How big of an issue do you think that this is going to be? Is it going to be a big topic of conversation? Well, it's going to be standing room only when they when they give their conference presentation because it's had so much advanced publicity. But I'll be at both Black Hat and DEF CON, and there are some really, really... I, th I think there are some bigger stories there. There are researchers who claim to have found some serious problems with the 802.11 standard that Wi-Fi uses. Uh, there's a one presentation which is distinct 48 dirty secrets cryptographers don't want you to know. And if crypto is broken, then that's our, you know, our best defense out the window. And there's also a very interesting hack on how to uh, protect yourself against people hacking your car systems, which I think is going to be rather interesting. Absolutely. Thanks so much to Ian Thompson, reporter over at The Register. Thanks for joining us and let folks know where they can keep up with you. Thank you very much. Got a Twitter handle you want to plug before we go? <laughs> well, if they can spell my name right, it's uh, <laughs> Ian Thompson, all one word. That's I-A-I-N. And Thompson yes, without a P. You make it tough, but there, I have faith in, I have faith in all of us. Thanks so much, Ian. Thank you. Finally, so what's inside the virtual reality, huh? Our friends at iFixit, they provide repair guides and teardowns electronics and actually have sponsored Twitch shows in the past, have disassembled the second generation Oculus Rift development kit, which became available earlier this year for $350. Among the findings, the display is the front panel of a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 smartphone. Interesting. Also, by using an infrared camera, the iFixit team was able to capture a picture of the 40 infrared LEDs that were inside the headset. So they're there. iFixit gave the Rift DK2 a repairability rating of 9 out of 10. That's very good. Of course, 10 being the easiest to fix. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg whose company completed the purchase of Oculus this month, earlier this month for $2 billion, says that he sees opportunities for bringing Oculus's technology to medicine, education, and communications. I, for one, cannot wait, because Facebook is boring. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Just kidding. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2, sort of. And write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program. You know what it is, but I'll tell you anyway. Tech News Today, that's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.